The following is a special presentation of 18 WJTS Sports. 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 Welcome to Indiana High School Football on 18 WJTS TV. This game of high school football is proudly brought to you by Uvalor Chevy and Uvalor Toyota, Lyuna of the Indiana Laborers District Council, Just Whimsy, Meyer Truck Equipment, Dubois County Tire, Man Enterprises, Carpet Warehouse, and Maringer's Plumbing, Heating, and Air. It's time for kickoff. Let's head out to the field. Back at the jungle, along with Michael Cruz and Caleb Nepp, I'm Steve Cole. It is homecoming night here at Heritage Hills. And congratulations are in order to the 2024 Football homecoming queen, Liz Gogol, and homecoming king, Houston Litton. Of course, he plays on this Patriot football team as a kicker, and he was out there along with uh, one or two other football players, two others anyway, Jace Dutlinger and Parker Hart, also in the homecoming court on the, in the, with the seniors. Tyler Rucks are in there with the juniors. And uh, so congratulations to those two, Liz and Houston, and everybody involved with homecoming. They did it before the game tonight. And always a fun time for the kids when you get uh, the homecoming festivities underway. Good week for everybody on homecoming week. Looking at the numbers, and we'll start with the two quarterbacks in this one because they're the guys that everybody wants to talk about. For South Spencer, Ty Brown, the six foot, 190 pound senior, is 20 out of 40 passing, 322 yards, four touchdowns against just one interception. Completing 50% of his uh, passes, throwing for 107 yards a game. And he has run the ball 36 times for 482 yards and seven scores. That is 13.4 yards per carry, 16 yards, I'm sorry, 161 yards per game. Rushing the football on the season. On the other side, Jet Goldsberry, six feet, 195, a junior. He is 27 of 52 passing for 440 yards, six touchdowns against three interceptions, completing 52% of his passes, 16.3 yards per completion, and 147 yards passing per game for Goldsberry on the ground. Jet not rushing it quite as much this season, <clears throat> excuse me, as he did. A year ago, 33 rushes for 203 yards and a touchdown, averaging 6.2 yards a carry and 68 yards per ball game. So both teams have made it out onto the field. Patriots in the in the home uniforms, blue jerseys, red football pants, red helmets with the Patriot logo on each side. Rebels in the all-white road uniforms, white pants, white jerseys with the blue numbers. White helmets with the script Rebels on the side and the blue stripe up the middle. Captains meeting at midfield before we get this football game underway. Sun went down. We got a fantastic sunrise or sunset in front of us and, and the Patriots in their classic blue jerseys and red pants. I like to see that. So these two... Longtime county foes will lock horns once again, the 54th time for Heritage Hills and South Spencer to meet on the gridiron. I'd say that sunset's red, white, and blue. It kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, I would say that. I see red, white, and blue sometimes, but I think that is. So Very fitting for two teams here tonight, both. <laughs> with red, white, and blue in their color schemes. So. Absolutely. Mother Nature getting in on the <laughs> Spencer County Act tonight, which is good to see. With Welcome to the jungle in the background. Always a big tradition here in Lincoln City. Now Spencer won, right, and they will receive, or, would, or did Heritage Chills win and defer? There we go. Well, I was, I was looking look at my equipment, so. I always look away right whenever they do that. <laughs> I do as well. <laughs> but there's a very, very nice crowd from Heritage Chills on hand tonight, wrapping around the track a little bit. 
Some people with their lawn chairs like to get that field level view. Love to see it. Yeah, with the homecoming tonight, it was it was pretty much full. The parking lot was pretty full early on. There were a lot of tailgating, homecoming tailgaters, believe it or not. You do love to see it, especially on a beautiful night like tonight. Yeah, temperatures <clears throat> falling through the 70s throughout the football game tonight. We'll finish up in the low 70s. Can't ask for much better football weather. <clears throat> Finally got that dust out of the air. Got a little bit of rain this week. That was awesome. Much needed. Yeah, field is still nice and firm. <clears throat> Just a little bit of moisture kicks up as you walk, but not slick at all. Shouldn't affect anybody's ability to run or cut tonight. Not soft at all anywhere. And Carter Payne is out there to kick it away for Heritage Hill, so Sal Spencer will have <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll have the ball first. Payne will tee it up on the right hash mark, defending the north goal here at the jungle. Looks like Denver Epperson and maybe Tate Schulte back deep, trying to see who that is on the far side over there. They stand about their own five-yard line. Payne has put, been putting almost everything in the end zone for a touchback the last couple weeks. Pretty negligible wind right now, too. And he will boom one down the field. The returners will turn and watch that one go a couple of yards deep in the end zone, and the Rebels will start at their own 20-yard line. I believe that was Ethan Fuquay oh, okay. back deep as well. Gotcha. Tough to see that number from this far away. Fuquay is the lead running back, 6 feet, 190-pound junior, 34 carries, 121 yards, and a touchdown. Just 3.6 yards a carry, averaging 40 uh, yards per ball game. He'll be in the backfield along with Ty Brown. <clears throat> Two wide receivers come to the near side, one to the far, and an extra blocking back in the backfield as well. Epperson goes in deep motion, and they'll hand it to Fuquay up the middle, and he'll get out to about the 22. Just a little bit of a line surge there for South Spencer. We'll get Fuquay two. It'll be second and eight. <clears throat> So how does Ty Brown usually run, guys? Does he run on an option? Does he do sweeps? Does he do power? What's How does he normally do that? I would say a little bit of everything. Yeah, a lot of sweeps and then scrambles. Uh, when pass plays break down, he'll find some open field and run extremely fast. Four wide, two to each side out of the pistol. Brown will fake the handoff. He'll roll near side, fire down the middle, and that ball is intercepted. Picked off by Tyler Ruxer at the 34. He'll bring it back to the 30 and be dragged down right there at the 29. Second interception thrown this season for Ty Brown and the Patriots. Defense gets the turnover and the offense in business deep in Rebel territory. Well, I don't know. I don't know how well. Well, I do know. Heritage Hills has scouted that pretty well. Tyler Ruxer, I feel like, kind of knew that was coming and he really jumped that route. Yeah, I saw three blue jerseys in that area. And Ty Brown rolled out right there. Looked like he had a, I believe that was Epperson he was looking for and stared him down a little too much. Second interception of the season for Ruxer out of the pistol. The give is to Alex Smith. He veers to the left side, bowls over a tackler just inside the 30 and went to the turf at around the 27 after picking up three yards. The Patriot senior running back, second and seven. Patriots start their first drive at the South Spencer 30. Clock moving down to 10.45, just underway in this one in the first quarter. <clears throat> Patriots will send two wide receivers to the far side. A receiver and the H-back both come to this near side. Smith, the running back, and Goldsberry back to pass. Sets, fires deep far side, has a man out there in the end zone, and that ball is caught. No signal yet, waiting to see if he held on, and he did. Touchdown, Patriots. Man, that was a beauty. That was without a doubt one of the best throws I've ever seen in high school. That was a dot into the back right corner of the end zone. You can't you can't deliver the ball better than that. Yeah, he, he sometimes doesn't hit that spot, but he knew exactly where he was going to throw at that time. There was no question, and he threw it to the spot, and, and – uh, Man, his guy was right there. It was Tyler Ruxer making the catch. 
Toe tapping in the back corner of the end zone. Carter Payne delivers the extra point. And with 10.24 to go in the opening quarter of play, Heritage Hill strikes first and strikes quickly. Patriots 7, Rebels nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. We're back after this on 103.3 The Fixed Sports. Are you in the market for an affordable vehicle? Take a short ride to Dale and stop in at Mike's Auto Sales at 339 North Washington Street. Mike's Auto Sales has been buying and selling quality affordable vehicles since 2002. Financing options are available for those who qualify. Check out their website at mikesautosalesllc.net. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Or give Mike or Mary a call at 812-937-9995. Come to the Carpet Warehouse. Quality you can stand on. You know they sell and install carpet, but Carpet Warehouse also specializes in hard surface floors as well. Vinyl, hardwood, laminate, and tile. Come see the many different options and get a free in-home estimate today at Carpet Warehouse, 650 Woodlawn Drive in Jasper. Come to the Carpet Warehouse. Quality you can stand on. Goldsberry to Tyler Ruxer in the back right corner of the end zone. He drug the feet or toe tapped whatever he did but he got down in the back corner held on as he was knocked to the ground and the Patriots strike first up seven nothing just over a minute and a half into this football game that's a that's a pretty pass and a pretty catch there Re really well executed for the Patriots so Payne on for his second kickoff the first one was a couple of yards deep for a touchback he'll boom another one and this one might no, it would have been, but right in front of the goal line, and Ethan Fuquay lets it bounce into the end zone for the touchback, and the Rebels will start from the 20. Yeah, obviously a tough start for the Rebels, but this is a huge drive where you have a chance to respond and get right back in this, or uh, obviously you'd be giving the ball back to Heritage Hills, trailing a touchdown if you don't score here. Three wide receivers come to the near side for the Rebels. One goes to the far. Single setback is Fuquay in the pistol behind Brown. Ty takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself into the hole off the left side, gets a couple out to the 23 before he is driven back hard and slammed to the ground. Gain of three for Ty Brown, second and seven. Yeah, Ty's a fantastic athlete, but the Patriots know that too. They know that he's the guy that they need to stop, and he's probably going to take punishment because of that. Without a doubt, they know it. And Ty knows that everybody knows that he's the first guy on the, static, uh, on the scout report every single week when you play the Rebels. <clears throat> Same formation on second and seven. Brown takes the snap and gives it to his running back, and Ethan Fuquay met in the backfield. Defensive front for the Patriots just overwhelmed the Rebel offensive line there. Loss of two back to the 21. And it's third down and nine. Nothing Fuquay could do there. He just had nowhere to go. Absolutely. As soon as he, as soon as that ball was in his hands, he was met by a host of, of uh, Patriot defenders. So Patriots in a tough spot here, third and 10, after throwing an interception last series. Trips again come to the near side. One wide receiver to the far side, pistol backfield. Brown looks over the defense. He'll take a high snap on a draw. He'll give it to Fuquay, and Fuquay gets a yard maybe to the 22. I thought Ethan missed a cutback lane coming back to the near side, but he'll get a yard, and it's fourth down and eight, and the Rebels will be forced to punt. Yeah, I saw that too, Steve. It looked like he had a little bit of a hole on the right side of the line there, but kept going left and only picked up one brown is the punter he does look like he'll drop back in a uh, about a 12 yard drop this time 11 yard drop ruxer and alex smith back at their own 45 snap is a good one just a one step kick and a very high short kick taken on a fair catch by alex smith at the rebel 49 yard line both of these quarterbacks punt and they both can really boom one, but that time Brown just got way underneath one and kicked it very high. Yeah, and we didn't really get a look. Usually, uh, at least week one, uh, 
we saw the uh, run punt option, as I like to call it. Didn't quite see it there. It looked like he was committed to punting from. Uh, yeah, he had the traditional drop back there, the, and still just took the one one step approach. But uh, yeah, didn't even fake the the option this time. So the Patriots first and ten from the Rebel. 49, a single receiver to the near side, two to the far, out of the pistol. And the give is to Alex Smith up the middle off the left guard, and he pounds forward for a yard or two. He's still squirming <laughs> forward. Gets to the 40, almost to the 47. So it's a couple of yards, second down and eight. It's like catching a snapping turtle, you know. He never. It's hard to get him down. His legs are always <laughs> up. His hands are up. He's just wallering around there. And that's what he did. He got an extra yard and a half because – he bear crawled through that. Caleb, it's the joys of working with Michael Cruz. <laughs> I love the it. The wildlife-themed similes and metaphors <laughs> never will cease to amaze you. On second down, Goldsberry rolls near side, fires to the sideline, caught by Peyton Gray, turns into the middle of the field to get away from the defense, picks up a first down, down to the 36-yard line. He was shy of the first down where he caught it, back around the 42, but a good run after the catch, picks up a first down. But really, I mean, have you ever tried to tackle a snapping turtle? No, I have not. Yeah, not it's not either. easy. It's not an easy thing to I do. I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd attempt. I know you've got to keep your your hands on the shell and behind the head. That's all I know. Yeah, you got to keep and fi you got to keep fists there, or they'll get your fingers. So <laughs> it's complicated. Two wide to the near, one to the far. The give is to Alex Smith, and actually, it's Trey Willard, and he finds a lot of room up the middle. And Ty Brown from his safety spot comes and spills Willard, but. Not until he's a yard or two past the first down marker. Put the football down at the 24 after a 12-yard rumble for big Trey Willard, who checks in at 6 feet, 240 pounds, and a senior. Woo. Same formation for the Patriots on first and 10. That's a safety's nightmare right there, a 240-pound back. With the man in motion, they will give it to Ruxer on a sweep far side, pounding through tackles as he got outside across the 20 and knocked down around the 16-yard line, it appears. Nine-yard pickup for Ruxer on the sweep. I think that's maybe his first carry of the season. We're down to 6.44 to go in this opening quarter of play. Clock is stopped at the moment. I'm not really sure why because we didn't have a first down, and I don't think he went out of bounds either, but maybe he did. But whatever the case, second and one from the, actually from the 15 for the Patriots. Single wide receiver to the near side, two running backs, one on either side of his quarterback in shotgun, and it's Jet Goldsberry on a little bit of a delay, gets outside left to the 10, a little hesitation move to the five, trying to tiptoe the sideline, and he will get into the end zone for a touchdown, but there is a flag and a hold on the Patriots, and Michael, we all saw that before Jet Goldsberry got out of the backfield. That's how he got out of the backfield that time. Yeah, snapping turtle got him. <laughs> Alex Smith had a hold of the defensive end and twisted him around. It wasn't a real hard call there. Yeah, and that was one of the – holds where that had a direct impact on uh, that play. You Sometimes it happens away from the ball, and you really hate to see it, but uh, I think that uh, South Spencer would have been on that had he not grabbed him. Yeah, but it takes away from a really nice run there. Jet made some nice moves down at the, in, at, at the goal line to, to get it across the goal line, but uh, it'll come back for sure. Penalty marked off to the 25. It's now instead of second and one, or instead of the touchdown, it's now second and 11 from the Rebel 25. Three wide receivers come to the near side. Anderson Smith joins Ruxer and Gray. One wide receiver to the far side out of the pistol. Goldsberry rolls near oh. side, fires as he's hit toward the end zone. Wide open was Tyler Ruxer and he makes the catch for a touchdown. Rebels got lost in the secondary and well, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Caleb, if there's one guy you can't leave uncovered for Heritage Hills, it's number eight, Tyler Ruxer. I can't argue with that. I didn't see a Rebel within 15 yards of him. So uh, definitely a busted coverage there. Not sure if they were sitting back in a zone and got lost or if that was man to man, but regardless, way too open. And missed Carter it. Payne and Carter Payne missed the extra point. That is his first. Miss on the season. He had been 12 out of 12 
in extra point conversions, but he misses one here. And with 6.29 to go in this opening quarter on the RG Mechanical School Board, it's Patriots 13, Rebels nothing on 103.3 The Fixed Sports. This is John Hurley, and I am your candidate for Spencer County Council at Large. I'm a career and technical educator, union member, and lifelong resident of Spencer County who will fight for the transparency, clarity, and vision Spencer County needs and its residents deserve. Remember, straight ticket voting for only a political party does not count for at-large, school board, public questions, or retention of judges. You must go into the ballot to vote for these races. I am John Hurley, and I ask for your vote on or before November 5th. Paid for by Hoosiers for Hurley, Beth Packer Treasurer. Tyler Ruxer having himself a game, and we still have 6.29 to go in the first quarter. Ruxer with two touchdown receptions today, an interception, and a nine-yard run on a wide receiver sweep. So Tyler is having himself a night, and we still have half of the first quarter to go. Yeah, I'd say he's on pace for 16 touchdowns and four interceptions. We'll see if he gets there. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, doubled his touchdown receiving total for the season. Came into tonight with three th through the first three weeks. and I'm sorry, with two through the first three weeks. Has two tonight. Payne to kick it away again from the 40. Drives another one deep. Didn't get the height on this one, but that one is a full 10 yards deep in the end zone for the touchback. And Rebels will start from their own 20 again with 6.29 to go in this opening quarter. And now if you're South Spencer, you're just really trying to get anything positive going on offense. Uh, it's a tough start. Um, you got to give your defense a little bit of a break, even though there's a lot of guys playing both sides of the ball. Yeah, and conservatively, it seemed to me like, I don't know if this is going to be offensive, but I think they're protecting Ty a little bit already, and I don't blame them for that. Four wide, two to each side out of the pistol. On first and ten, Brown takes the snap, wants to throw, steps up. Now will run, far side, 25, 30, spins out of a tackle and up to the 34-yard line. Took a big hit at the end of that run as he went down, but that's a 14-yard pickup, and Rebels have their first first down of the ball game. You can see how dangerous he is there. When they, when they finally did get him down, he was about a half a pirouette away from escaping that and going about 80 yards. Yeah, nice 14-yard run for number 14 on that one. Always love to. Ty had thoughts about playing college at the next level and playing football at the next level in college. He has instead decided to play baseball and has accepted a scholarship offer from Tracy Archuleta at Indiana State. Same formation on first and ten for the Rebels. Brown to throw. Pressure comes. He steps up and gets away. Breaks out to the near side. Looks. Fakes again. 35. 40 as he cuts back inside and dragged down just shy of the marker at the 42-yard line. He'll pick up eight electric yards on that run. Yeah. Michael, I think he might have heard you say that they're, they might be protecting him. That's a, those are a couple of tough runs right there. And that a play will not count. Yes, yeah, they didn't see the flag initially, but there's a holding penalty against the Rebels that wipes out, wipes out that run from Brown. So both quarterbacks have had really, really nice runs wiped off the board by holding penalties. 5.41 to go in this first quarter, and it's 13-0 Patriots. Rebels... Finally got their first first down on their third possession of the game. Four wide receivers again, two to each side. Pistol backfield with Fuquay behind Brown. Ty sends a man in motion to the near side. Gives it to him on a wide receiver sweep. And he'll Ooh. cut up into a hole and find some pretty good yardage there. That was Tate Schulte. 5'11", Jr. It's his 16th carry of the season already. Came in 15 carries for 70 yards on the year. So they've used Tate in the running game a little bit. And yeah, nice positive run on the sweep action there. Get yep. something positive going. Make back some of that uh, 
the yardage lost from the from the holding penalty. Looks about like a four yard gain, second and sixteen. Same formation for the Rebels. And Brown, long count, takes the snap. Faked a roll to the far side, comes back on a jailbreak screen to the near side, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. The sophomore blatant niece couldn't hold on, but Michael, it looked like the Patriots had sniffed out the jailbreak screen there. Yeah, Caden Frakes was right, was putting the pressure on and, and just did miss the sack, but altered the pass, I think, a little bit. But there were as many blue jerseys there as there were white jerseys. So third down and now 16 for the Rebels. From their own 28, they need the 44 for a first down. And for once, my math works out. That is 16 <laughs> yards to go. Two receivers set to the near side, one to the far, and the Rebels have to use a timeout. The play clock was running down, so South Spencer uses their first time of the, timeout of the half. 447 to go, opening period. 13-0 Patriots over the Rebels on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. Back after this on 103.3 The Fix Sports. If you ask area residents what is the first thing that comes to mind when they think of Spencer County Bank, chances are they'll mention the bank's commitment to community support. That's not surprising because Spencer County Bank has been locally owned since 1907, building relationships and helping support our neighbors for generations. Plus, with helpful banking solutions and the latest digital banking technology, we are your complete financial partner. Check us out today at spencercountybank.com or stop in one of our convenient locations. Spencer County Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender third down and long for the rebels fake to the receiver in motion give it to ethan fuquay up the middle and ethan finds good running room he's going to come up four yards short of the first down but that's about a 12 yard gain for fuquay on the give up the middle they'll actually say the knee went down at the 39 so 13 yard gain but it is fourth down for the rebels and another well potential punting situation we'll see what they want to do here on Fourth and five. Brown does take the deep drop this time. The four wide receivers out in a single protector. Brown takes the snap, doesn't roll out, and goes ahead and kicks one high and short far side and goes out of bounds at around the 39-yard line of the Patriots. Not the distance Ty wanted on that one. Only about a... 20-yard punt, if that. Well, he's taking a one-step drop, or one-step kick, and uh, I'm, I think he's just trying to get rid of that ball and, and kick it as high as possible so it can be covered. That one went out of bounds, so uh, I don't know if he did that on purpose, but they're trying to make sure the Patriots can't return it. So Heritage Hills has scored on the first two times they've had the football, but this will be the first time they start in their own territory, first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. And on first down, Goldsberry, a keeper coming near side on a quarterback sweep, finds running room, and he's going to outrun everybody into the secondary. 30, cuts back to the middle of the field, makes a man miss at the 25, and finally gets out of another two tackles as Ty Brown caught him inside the 10, and, Ty, and uh, Goldsberry strong enough to break that one, plus one more inside the five, and he goes 61 yards for a touchdown on the first play of the third drive for the Patriots. Wow, just very impressive there. Strength and speed and vision. I mean, he knew that he couldn't get to the sideline. He had a couple guys there cut back to the middle of the field. And I think there it. were at least three, maybe four would-be tacklers that he bounced off of. That was incredible. Snapback is good, and Carter Payne booms this one through. And with 3.49 to go in the opening quarter, Patriots have already opened up a three-score lead. Heritage Hills 20, South Spencer nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. We're back after this on 103.3 The Fix Sports. Thermwood Corporation is located in Dale. Established in 1969, Thermwood Corporation manufactures both three and five access CNC machining centers and large scale additive manufacturing systems. Thermwood's products are used in various industries, including aerospace, automotive, woodworking, marine, military, and others. Thermwood is deeply involved in CNC technology and development, incorporating a high level of smart control technology in its products. Stop by and see them in Dale or online at thermwood.com.
61 yard run for Jack Goldsberry, his second touchdown run of the season. Not his long, uh, yeah, this is his longest run of the season, previously 34. But Michael, that one was all kinds of electric. Yeah, I mean, it's strength and vision and power and speed. I mean, it's so many things, and we, we just haven't seen that many. We've had some fantastically electric, awesome runners and play, but we haven't seen many plays like that. And and we see those from Jet, you know, every every week or two, he'll do something amazing like that. Payne to kick it away one more time, drives another one about seven or eight yards deep into the end zone, and Rebels will again start at their own 20-yard line. 3.49 to go in this opening quarter of play here in Lincoln City. And I'll make one last point about that run. I think that South Spencer almost had him down at the South, Spen South Spencer 20, yeah. round in there. And then I still think he bounced off about three different guys. Yeah, Ty Brown had him around the 10 or the 5. Ty had him around the shoulder pads and, and did it. It's about the same thing Ty did to the Patriot linebacker on his amazing run. Just slipped him and had another couple guys hit him before he went in. Four wide, two to each side for the Rebels on first and 10 from their own 20. Brown in the pistol, takes the snap, rolls to the near side, looking to throw. Fires on the run. That ball is caught, it appears, at, nope, incomplete. Denver Epperson, the intended receiver, right at the first down marker at the 30, but could not hang on. Second down and 10. Yeah, pretty well thrown ball, a little low. Uh, only where Epperson could get to it, but uh, couldn't quite come up with it. That one hit the turf. Second and 10 for the Rebels. Again, four wide receivers, two to each side, and it does appear Fuquay again is the running back behind Brown. Ty looks over the defense, takes the snap, and feeds his running back, and Fuquay finds a decent seam up the middle and picks up four, almost five. So he got out maybe just across the 24-yard line, and that brings up third down and six. Boy, that was not a very friendly spot. I thought he was much closer to the 25, didn't quite get the 25, but that one was back about a half yard from where I thought he went down. I think that might have been Duke Sitzman on well, that Well, that was run. Sitzman I with the run there, so. 12, okay. We don't see that very often. Four wide again, two to each side on third down and six, and Brown will roll to the near side again. Fires the deep ball out here and overthrows Ashton Rhodes, his intended receiver. Rhodes trying to get free down this near sideline. Covered over there by Alex Smith. Yeah, Rhodes had about two or three yards of separation, just a little too much on that ball from, from Brown. It's not the easiest throw on the dead run toward the sideline. And Ty overthrew it. He'll drop back to punt from his own 11 or 12-yard line. Ruxer and Alex Smith back at their own 48. Snap back a little low. He'll take a little better time and get off a much better punt. Alex Smith drops back to his own 41 going backward. Cuts up to the 45 and powers his way up to the 48 or 49 near midfield before he goes down. 2.52 to go in this opening quarter as the Patriots come back to offense. From their own 48-yard line, it appears. And we'll see what the Patriots do here. It's been hard to control them, the run or the pass. Two, uh, one wide receiver comes to the near side for the Patriots. Two to the far with an H back to the near side. Anderson Smith out of the pistol. Goldsberry will... Take the snap, and he will give it to Alex Smith, his running back, and Alex hit right at the line of scrim excuse me, right, right at the line of scrimmage, but able to spin out of that tackle and pick up a couple three yards, I guess, to the Rebel 49. So good job by the senior running back to create something out of nothing there. And not a bad not a bad job that time by the South Spencer D line. They really haven't been poor between the tackles. It's been uh the uh the passing game and when 
some outside runs that have really killed him so far. Trips to the near side. One man to the far. Goldsberry out of the pistol. Rolls to this near side to his left, looking to throw. Backs up. Fires to the sideline. Caught. Dalton Pledger the catch. He didn't have anybody on him, and he's able to get up across the Rebel 40. We'll see where they say he stepped out of bounds, around the 37, and that's easily good for another Patriot first down. Just the third catch of the year for Dalton Pledger. Two catches for 21 yards coming in. But look at how the young quarterback, of course, is junior now. He's had a full season under his belt, but had the long ball, a, you know, a possibility, but checked down to that lower guy. I really like to see that. Out of the pistol again, and Smith the carry up the middle, and he'll finish off another nice run. Hit after a gain of about two, but finished off for another three yards. He'll end up getting five or six out of this play. Six-yard gain up to the 31, uh, seven-yard gain almost to the 31. We call it six, second down and four. Minute and a half remains in this first quarter. Patriots already up 20 to nothing. Two wide receivers to the far side, a wide receiver and an H back to the near side. Goldsberry fakes to his running back, rolls to the far side to throw, fires on the run, far side caught, and breaking a tackle. Is that Ruxer? Was Tyler Ruxer? Yes. And he'll get inside the 15 and down to the. 12-yard line before he was finally spilled. Another big play and another Patriot first down. Another impressive throw by Goldsberry on that one. Rolling right. Throws it about 20 yards downfield on a rope. Right in the receipt. Right in Ruggser's hands. I mean, you cannot draw it up any better than that. Four wide receivers again. Two to each side. Pistol backfield. Goldsberry straight back to throw. Fires to the corner of the end zone. Backing up, making the catch, and Meredith. hanging on. Meredith. It's Hunter Meredith back in the ballgame. <laughs> Didn't know whether Meredith would play tonight or not after getting banged up two weeks ago at Christian Academy. Wasn't listed on the two deep, but comes in and backpedaling into the back of the end zone. Makes a very nice catch <laughs> for a touchdown. I didn't want him to jump like that. I want him to take care of that knee for another week. <laughs> What did we say that was? 16 yards, Michael? Uh, 12, I think it was 12. 12 okay, from the, the 12. Okay, scoreboard. Yeah. Snap back a little high. Rucks are a good job of getting it on the tee, and Payne pounds it through. And with 48 seconds to go in this opening quarter of play, it's already Heritage Hills 27, South Spencer nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard on 103.3 The Fix Sports. This is Tony Ubelar, Ubelar Toyota in Jasper. Truck lovers know the Toyota Tundra for its legendary strength and reliability. The new Tundras are long on comfort, technology, and safety, too. Right now, we've got plenty of new Tundras in stock, with options for every purpose and budget. Loaded with features to help you get things done. We have flexible financing and lease options as well. Find your new Tundra today at Ubelar Toyota in Jasper, where customers send their friends for hardworking trucks since 1929. Fall is in the air. Footballs are flying and tailgate parties are popping up everywhere. Whether you and your friends are tailgating before a high school, college, or NFL football game, or maybe even your kids' soccer match, everything you'll need to make that party a success, from the plates and bowls to napkins, paper towels, plastic utensils, snacks, soft drinks, and your favorite beverage, you'll find it all at your neighborhood holiday food store. We carry a great selection of hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken ribs, turkey tenders, and more in our always fresh meat department. Even the ground beef or roast you're going to need to make that big pot of chili or vegetable soup. After you checked out, we'll even carry it to your car or pickup truck for you. Pick up everything you'll need for your tailgate party today at your neighborhood holiday food store, where you expect more and get it for less. It's the spirit of holiday food. 12-yard pass, the third of the quarter for Jack Goldsberry, this time to Hunter Meredith on a 12-yard scoring strike. Carter Payne's extra point, and it's 27-0 Heritage Hills with less than a minute to go in this opening quarter. And it's going to sound weird to say this, Caleb, but I don't think the Rebels... 
they've missed a, a, an assignment here or two on defense in the past game, but they haven't been inept out there. They've they're just playing a team right now that is just clicking on all cylinders and is frankly bigger and stronger and faster than they are. Yeah, and like I said, I was impressed. You know, their D line's been pretty solid between the tackles, limiting. Uh, that's kind of where I thought that uh, they would struggle tonight, big time. But you know, they've proven to. Stop the run pretty well. They just have to let a couple guys get out in space, and that's where they're getting beat right now. Another kick eight yards deep in the end zone for Carter Payne, who, by the way, had the winning kick from distance. Really nice goal last night for the Patriots soccer team, who is having an outstanding season as they came from behind to beat Jasper 2-1. to one. Payne scored the game winner with around five minutes to go. It was off to the left side of the goal, and as you look at the goal, and not an easy angle. He made an outstanding play. A banger from distance, as they like to say. <laughs> Out of the pistol with an extra blocking back, Brown takes the snap, gives it to his running back, and pounding up to the 25-yard line on a nice five-yard gain was Ethan Fuquay that time. Five-yard gain. For Ethan, and it's second down five. 30 seconds to go in this quarter. Rebels will go ahead and run a play here fairly quickly. Two wide receivers come to the near side, one to the far. The extra blocking back in there to the left of the quarterback. Fuquay in a pistol behind the quarterback. Brown takes the snap, gives it to Fuquay again off the left side. And the Patriot defense was all over that give. Loss of a yard for Ethan back to the 24. It's third down and six. Yeah, it seems like for every uh, solid gain uh, running the ball, South Spencer, they uh, followed up by usually a loss of one or two. After a quarter here in Lincoln City at the jungle, Heritage Hills 27, South Spencer nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. Quarter number two is after this on 103.3 The Fixed Sports. Winkler Wholesale is a family-owned business located in Spencer County and has been operating since 1911. Winkler Wholesale is the perfect size for freight distribution, large enough to buy truckloads, yet small enough to deliver personal service and customizable programs. Winkler's also operates two distribution centers in Dale, Indiana, where they offer services such as food-grade storage, supply chain management, refrigerated and frozen storage, as well as fulfillment center services consisting of warehousing both cold and dry. Winkler's is a proud supporter of local area athletes. Just Whimsy on the Square in Jasper is your exclusive ladies' boutique, carrying a variety of incomparable top designers. You can select apparel from their large variety of elaborate accessories. Stop in for unique gifts like art from local artists and home decor. Think local. Buy local. Just Whimsy on the Square in Jasper. Along with Michael Cruz and Caleb Knepp and our WJTS cameraman Bill Potter, I'm Steve Kolb. Back at the jungle in Lincoln City. One quarter in the books already. Heritage Hills. 27, South Spencer nothing. Rebels looking at third down and six from their own 24-yard line. Ty Brown with his offense out of a pistol with an extra blocker. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls far side, looking to throw. Gets outside, now will run, and he'll have the first down. Spins across the 35 and knocked down around the 36 or 37-yard line. Nice first down run for Ty Brown. Yeah, Ty's showing off that athleticism. It's the first time we've he said it's about the second time we've seen him get loose running the ball. There he had a gain of 14 earlier in the game. I think he got 12 on that one to move the chains. Yeah, just very explosive once he gets out there. He gets out there fast enough, but then whenever he needs to get that extra gear, he just goes. <laughs> I think they'll mark that as a gain of 11. First and 10 from... The 30, just across the 35, trips to the near side. One man to the far. Brown, high snap. Fires a screen out here. Caught Denver Epperson. And he'll be snowed under after a gain of a yard or two to the 36 or 37. Dalton Pledger and, and eight, uh, Smith in on the stop that time. Alex, Alex Smith. Smith, thank you. I, I, I narrowed it down to two, didn't not, I? Yeah, not Hayden. <laughs> or not okay, Anderson. Three. Right, not yeah, Anderson. there were three no. options there, aren't there? Yep. Second down, and, well, they only gave him a gain of a yard to the 36, so second and nine. It looked to me like he had at least two on that one. Trips go to the far side, one to the near for the Rebels, out of the pistol. Brown looking over the defense. 
Takes the snap, gives it to his running back who kind of sneaks through, finds a hole, and Ethan Fuquay bulldog down after crossing the 40 to the 41, and the Patriots have a man down. Goldsberry. Jet Goldsberry holding his leg, it looks like. So the Patriot fans hold their breath as their all-everything quarterback and defender. Jet sitting up now. So that was a actually not a first down run for Fuquay. I beg your pardon. It was a six-yard run to the 41-yard line. But all eyes look to the back to the 35 where Jet Goldsberry and the Patriot training staff and head coach Todd Wilkerson stand out there on the field. Jet had taken a couple dings at uh, the Christian Academy game. Still played and was out there most of the time. There he's up. I think everyone on this side of the field was holding their breath. <laughs> <laughs> no question. So he'll walk off under his own power. and Tyler Ruxor, I think, will be quarterback. Okay. Yeah, they list Aiden no, Fisher. No, they moved him out. They moved him out. Aiden Fisher's right there. Yeah, he is listed as the backup quarterback. But we'll see how long Goldsberry will be out of this game and that whether he'll return. Ruxer has been the quarterback over the years, and he's been the backup quarterback. So we'll see if they put Aiden in there. But Aiden is in there on defense right now. So Rebels on second and four with – Three, four wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side, empty backfield. And Brown will roll to the far side, looking. Now will take off and run. He'll have the first down to the 50 and forced out of bounds there. It was a good job by the right side of the Rebel offensive line to collapse that down. Ty was really hoping something would set up downfield. So he didn't take off real quickly, Caleb, but he still had plenty of room to work out there. Yeah, nice job. I saw him looking downfield, thought he might let one rip, but he uh, tucked it and picked up the first game of 10 on that one. Nice run. Rebels haven't been in Patriot territory in this game, but they are at the midfield stripe right now. Goldsberry walking on the, uh, the sideline with the training staff, I think, or was that Meredith, actually? I don't see... Goldsberry down there right now. On, for, on first down, the give is to the running back and maybe a yard gain before he is driven backward. That was Fuquay. Fuquay got the call. Didn't have much room to go there. Just a yard to the Patriot 49, second down and nine. But that is the first foray into Patriot territory tonight for the Rebels. As we approach 10 minutes to go here in quarter number two, Patriots lead 27-0 on the RG Mechanical scoreboard, and the Rebels come to the line for second down and nine. Two wideouts to each side, pistol backfield. Patriots showing blitz, high snap. Brown fires the screen out here, the well, flare out actually, not a screen. And Ethan Fuquay just flat didn't catch that football. Yeah, tough start through the air for for Ty so far. Looks like he is one for six with an interception and only one yard one yard passing. It looked like there would have been a little room for Fuquay to run, but he just didn't catch the football. Brown saw the blitz coming. Two guys, one off either edge coming, and he threw it past them to an open Fuquay, but it's now third down and nine from the 49. Jet Goldsberry is it back out on the field. All right. A delayed handoff here. Fuquay steps into the hole, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. He was hammered on that play. Looks like he might have got one on that. Okay, gain of a yard to the 48, but it is fourth down and eight, and a likely punting situation for the Rebels. Just trying to see who was in on that stop, and it's a number I don't have. Oh, it's Austin Collins. That's who it is. Trenton Collins. I'm sorry. I just invented a first name. <laughs> Trenton wearing 67 now as he started the year at 89, and he made the big stop there. Brown angles one to the far side around the 15-yard line. 
Alex Smith didn't ask for the fair catch, and now he takes off to the near side, trying to get to the corner, and does. 25-30, down the sideline. Flag flies well behind the play, and it was actually Ruxer getting all the way to the Rebel 49 before he is dropped. He evidently did not call for a fair catch. Rebels thought he would have, and, and so they didn't hit him, and he took off running. Yeah, you don't see a guy catch a ball with a defender that close for a... Uh... That's been a staple of Heritage Hills football, Michael will tell you, is <laughs> not, to give up, a lot. <laughs> not to give up extra yards on a, on a punt bouncing and rolling. They want to come up and catch it, even if it's in a fair catch, to save yardage. But a lot of them don't fair catch, and will catch that right amongst, right amongst the defenders. You don't see them get hammered very much, but occasionally they, they'll take a hit. Well, it is a personal foul against Heritage Hills. Not sure what what happened on that play. I didn't see it. That certainly doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just didn't see it. Well, that was a change of direction there. So he came from all the way over. So that those wall Patriots set up those walls, and it was probably a blindside type situation where it might have right. been a helmet. I, I'm only guessing because I didn't see it. But you see that a lot where the defenders are going, and then they're turning this way, and then this this guy in the wall just goes, wham, oh. Wow, we smacked that one up, didn't we? You heard that hit from here. So that has been an emphasis in even high school football over the last several years, that illegal blindside block. Out of the pistol, they'll fake the handoff, and Goldsberry keeps it far side. Fakes inside, back to the outside, and has the edge. Back to the middle at the 35. Finally gets hit and wrapped up and will not go down, but finally whistles blow as he hits the 37-yard line, picks up. 17 yards and a first down on the first play of the series for the Patriots. It's got to be a confidence boost if uh, they blow the play dead before you're actually down. I, I would think it would be at least. That's impressive. So Heritage Hills had six touches of the football with the first team last week against Boonville. They have had four tonight. That is 10 for 10. They have scored in their last 10 possessions as the first team offense for Heritage Hills. First and 10 from their own 37. Trips to the near side and one to the far. Fake the handoff. Screen near side. A little jailbreak screen. And Tyler Ruxer turns it up and gets out across the 45 to the 47. It's a linebacker coming in to make a nice stop there. Briley Roth, 5'10", 185-pound junior, getting to Ruxer and making the stop there before he could turn that into an enormous play. It's still a pickup of nine, second and one. Ruxer, Anderson Smith, and Peyton Gray all to the far side. Trey Willard wide to the near side, I believe. Maybe, maybe not. No, it's not. It's Anderson Smith actually wide to the near side. Goldsberry all day to throw. Fires deep down the middle, and it's incomplete. Flag flies. Dalton Pledger, the intended receiver. Two flags fly on that. His pledger may have been grabbed around the 20-yard line. Yeah, well, he was grabbed probably around the 30, and then I don't think they were going to throw the flag if he made the catch and got the touchdown, but it looked like they threw it once. Well, you know, we've talked about this over the years. Pass interference in high school football is 15 yards, not a spot foul. So if you get beat over the top, might as well go ahead and grab the guy and give up the 15 rather than the 30 or 40 or 70. touchdown. Yeah. So the 15 yards puts it in Rebel territory at the 39. First and 10 for the Patriots. Yeah, go ahead and grab. Make it as subtle as possible and see if you can get by with it. And if you don't, you give up the 15. Goldsberry again to throw. Deep, deep drop. Fires a screen. Caught over there by Willard. Turns back to the middle of the field. Makes one guy miss. Hit around the knees. And still able to power out of that for another two yards down to about the 26-yard line. And that'll be an 11-yard gain. And a Patriot first down. Yeah, perfectly executed screenplay right there. About three Rebels in the backfield, and we quickly figured out why. It's because the yeah. whole line slipped out to, uh, to block on that one. Yeah, you fight and you fight and you fight, and if your offensive linemen are good enough actors and let you slip away a, a, just a little bit, then, boy, you're gone. <laughs> and then, like, oh, no. <laughs> Twin running backs in the uh, shotgun, and the give is up the middle. And is that Hunter? No. Who was Alex that? Alex Smith. Alex Smith, number zero, getting the call. And Alex, a very nice gain on first down. Picks up 
10 yeah. yards and another Patriot first down, down to the 13-yard line. As this Rebel first team offense, Michael, just continues to churn out big yards. Well, the Patriot first team offense. <laughs> Whatever I said, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. After all these years, hopefully our listeners know. I don't always say it. <laughs> what comes out of my mouth isn't what intended sometimes. Give is to the running back, and that is Trey Willard, it looks like. Rumbling inside the five and cut down around the four, maybe three-yard line. First and goal for the Patriots coming up. So first and goal from the four. Yeah, at this point, I don't even ask what I actually said. I, just, <laughs> I don't even want to know how bad it was. We'll just try to correct on the fly and go from there. Down to 6.20 to go in this first half. Clock running. This Patriot offense is rolling. This is their first long drive of the game. They've scored pretty quickly on, only, on all the other ones so far. Three wide receivers out. Pistol backfield. Goldsberry to throw under some pressure immediately. Gets away. Spins back, giving up yardage. Comes back to the near side. Fires on the run into the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown, Patriots, as Anderson Smith goes to the ground to haul that one in. He threw about a 25-yard strike for a four-yard touchdown there after he ran about 55 yards. Yeah, video game style scramble. I think he dodged <laughs> two defensive linemen about three different times to get enough space to get that one off. And Yeah, he was about back at his own 15 or 20. Yeah, he spun left. He spun right. He backed up a ton of yards. Rebels were giving it everything that might have been Briley Roth on the they're going to go for two. Blitz. Yeah, they will, having missed an extra point earlier. Pistol backfield. Goldsberry takes the snap. Quarterback run to the near side, and Jet pounds his way in for the two-point conversion. And with 5.58 to go in this first half, that was the reason they went for two. That makes it 35, and that makes it a running clock. As long as it stays, the margin stays at 35 going into halftime. So, 35 nothing Patriots on the RG Mechanical scoreboard in the annual Spencer County War. We're back after this on 1033 The Fix Sports. Countdown 3, 2, 1. a change in Indianapolis. Public education is being shortchanged. A strong public education is key to future success. Knowledge is power. We need to stop diverting education tax dollars away from public education. Public school teachers deserve a raise. Our children deserve the very best. The future depends on it. Paid for by the Spencer County Democratic Central Committee. Karen Wanninger, Treasurer. Carter Payne to kick it away again. Patriots up 35 nothing with two ticks under six minutes left in this first half. Officials bringing the football in for Payne to kick away. I think it's been Fuquay and Epperson, the deep backs. Hard they Danny Wind. I don't know. Is that number two or three? I believe hmm. that's Epperson. He's been kick returner most of the year. Two over there, but I don't know who this guy over here. I don't okay. think it's. I don't think it's a another deep kick. That was what point I was going to make. Was they haven't really been returning as much as. Watching those kicks sail over their heads into the end zone for touchbacks, and Payne does that yet again. South Spencer's possession. That is possession number one, two, three, four, five, six, and each and every one of them has started at their own 20-yard line because of touchbacks. 5.58 to go in this first half. Yeah, he really does have an impressive leg. Obviously, soccer player. 
Makes a lot of sense. So Rebels will send, looks like Tate Schulte wide to the near side. Couple of receivers set to the far side. Pistol look with an extra blocker to the left of the quarterback, to the right of the quarterback, and they give up the middle to the running back. Looked like he was going to have a seam, but the Patriots closed him down right at the 21 after a gain of yard. May have been Fuquay. Sitzman, maybe? Or maybe it was Duke Sitzman, and he looked like he had a seam. But when the Patriots hit him, he just completely stopped, and that's not critical of Duke. That's just telling you how good the Patriot defense was there. He just... He had momentum and everything and just came to a dead stop after a gain of a yard. Yeah, there's some horses up there for sure. Two wide receivers to the near side and one to the far. Extra running back is a blocker to the near side. And it's the running back again. Maybe that's Sitzman again. And he might get another. Your Patriots are signaling a fumble. It was Sitzman on the carry. No fumble. Signal there, another gain of a yard for Sitzman, and it's third down and eight as we move under five minutes to go in this first half. Yeah, the Patriots did come out of that scrum with the football, but not easy for us to see up here. Big. Alex Smith came out pointing that it was Patriots ball, and uh, Parker Hart had the ball, but it was he was probably already down. Twin running backs again out of the pistol. And the give is to the first man through, and he'll get another yard to the 24 before he is driven backward. That was a little bit of a different formation. It wasn't the pistol. It was a running back with an eye formation to his left out of the shotgun. I don't see that very often. And was that 60 on that carry? Briley Roth. Briley Roth on the carry. Okay. That's unusual. Yeah, because I could see him being in there as a blocking back in that situation, and then he gets the call. And actually probably gets two yards to the 25, where it's fourth and five. And Ty Brown drops back to punt from his own 14-yard line. Snapback is good enough, and he'll angle one far side. Good distance on this one. Smith calls for the fair catch, muffs it. And Rebels thought they had it, but it may have gone out of bounds. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was Ruxer, and at the very okay. last second, he waved for that <laughs> fair catch and couldn't make it. I'm not sure they would have given him that as the, at that late moment that he flung his arm up there because it was about the time the ball hit him, he put his arms up or his arm up to call the fair catch. There might have even been a little bit of contact between Ruxer and the nearest defender, but it was almost like Ruxer was so close he ran into the defender, so no flag flew for free catch interference. <laughs> and, uh, well... Coach Wilkerson's not. Yeah, he's out on the field to talk to the officials about it with 3.44 to go in the half. It was a very, very, very late fair catch, and it's very difficult for a guy coming down the field to stop on something. Well, like look where the chains yeah. are set up. It's South Spencer football is what they the way they've marked the chains. Mm. First mm. and ten for South Spencer. Oh, yeah. As the Patriots will get called for the, the uh, turnover and special teams. Rebels have it. At the 37-yard line of Heritage Hills. That's true. Yeah, it was really hard to tell from our vantage point if that ball had rolled out of bounds, but obviously that official on the sideline must have seen it much better than we did. So it goes as a muffed punt on Ruxer, and the Rebels get the football back first and 10 from their own 37. Clearly we didn't see who recovered it over there. We didn't even see the officials rule it as mm -hmm. having been muffed. No. Or it has been recovered by Sal Spencer. So Rebels first and 10 from the Patriot 37. Trips to the near side. Brown rolls to the near side. Now in some trouble. Rolls back far side. And he's going to get swarmed under back in his own territory at the 48-yard line. Wow. Looks like a loss of 15 on that one. Just when the Rebels had something going. Or at least some, uh, somewhat into Patriot territory. Uh, and I cannot tell you how good a play that was by the backside of the Patriot defense to get him hemmed in because Brown is so, so quick and elusive. To keep him hemmed in to where they could sack him that deep is really, really difficult. Second down and very long. 
That was very well played by the backside of the Patriot defense. Brown rolls to the far side to his right. Fires on the run, and it's intercepted. Patriots will uh, step out of bounds on the interception at the 41-yard line. Alex Smith. But Alex Smith with the pick. Alex, the second interception of the season. Ty's second interception thrown tonight. Alex Smith has got an uncanny ability to get to the ball, and, and he was just there. I mean, it was like nobody was there except Alex. Yeah, I was wondering where Ty was throwing that one. looked like uh, yeah, he was the only, uh, the only guy in the area. Yeah, there was no Patriot in the area. You're exactly right. So I don't know if that was a miscommunication with his receivers. Again, playing without two of his more veteran receivers out there in Braden Hughes and Brody Heichelbeck tonight, both out with injuries. Two wide to the near side, a receiver and an H-back to the far side, and Ruxer to throw. Fires quickly far side, caught. And Dalton Pledger, Dragon Defenders, into Rebel territory, up across the 45 to the 44-yard line. Picks up a first down. Dalton, not a big guy, 5'8", 160-pound junior, but showing off some good strength there, Michael. Yeah, he's a good player, no question. And uh, that was Jet. That was Jet, by the way, that threw that. And, yes. And uh, we've seen Pledger make some nice hand, hand you know, Ball's being bobbled or tipped, and he <laughs> brings it back in anyway. He's a good player. Four wide receivers this time as Anderson Smith goes out into the slot far side. Goldsberry to throw. Has plenty of time. Now under some pressure. Steps away and runs with a football 40. 35-30. Back to the near side and back up the middle 25. Cuts to the outside inside the 20 and finally upended just outside the 15-yard line of the Rebels. Just slithering through the defense. He finds a hole when you just don't think there's anything left. And it's an incredible runner. After getting shaken up earlier in the quarter, I'm not sure how much the Patriots want him to be a runner. But so much open territory there, he kind of, once he had to step up, didn't really have much of a choice but to run. First and 10, they will put the football right on the Rebel 15. Out of the pistol. Goldsberry takes the snap, gives it to Trey Willard up the middle, pounds through the defense, breaks tackles, and he'll go into the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots. Trey Willard's first touchdown of the night is third in the last two weeks. He runs so straight up. I wish he would just bend over just a little bit and get some of that power from his hips, but he runs straight up, and he, he still runs a lot of guys over, but he could run them over better if he had the power coming from his hips. <laughs> no telling how, how powerful he could be if he... <laughs> if he ran low, yes. Snapback is good, and Payne's extra point is good, and... It has been all hair to chills, to say the least. Minute 35 to go in this first half. Patriots 42, Rebels nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. We'll keep it right here. But uh, Patriots getting the interception from Alex Smith and cashing it in in just three plays from their own 41-yard line. Yeah, after the, the muffed punt, I think that aggravated the Patriots a little bit. It, you know, these guys these guys have a lot of pride. And there's four, I think, four state qualifying wrestlers on this team. And, and you know those guys are motivated. They're, they're just they're crazy to, to, to just really say it right, outright. And I think that ticks them off, you know. Well, that, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a fumble. What are they talking about? And then they sacked him for a 22-yard loss and then got the pick. And then they took it right in. So uh, this is a... A, a team that really does control its emotions very well, but they can focus those emotions too. And this is all against a, what's been a pretty pesky South Spencer team. I know they're one and two, but you know, playing North Posey closely, and they were hanging with Mount Vernon early in week two, and, and Heritage Hill is just showing that they are, if not the best team in the in the PAC, they are. Them and Gibson Southern are going to be the top two dogs, and they're just letting everybody know. Yeah. So we've got the homecoming king out there to kick it away. Houston Litton has it teed up <laughs> at the 40. And he has 
leg enough to get it into the end zone for a touchback. We've seen him do it. He'll drive this one deep, but it is returnable from the five for oh. Epperson, and he is hit and fumbled the football. Patriots have it on the 25. And Heritage Hills has it at the South Spencer 25. I didn't see the hit. Who made the hit? That might have been Bladen Neese on that return. It looks like three instead of two, and Neese separated from the football with a minute 28 to go in the half. Well, when it rains, it pours. First and 10 for the Patriots from the South Spencer, 25, with a minute 28 to go in this first half. Out of the pistol. And the snap to Goldsberry gives it to Alex Smith. Oh, he fumbled. fumbled the football, and the Rebels fall on it at the 20. Smith separated from the football by the Rebels, and we trade turnovers. Wonder if a uh, little moisture on the ball from, uh, you know, the field's not very wet, but it rained quite a bit earlier. Could be a factor. So with a minute 22 to go in the half, Sal Spencer back on the football first and ten as we trade turnovers. Clock did stop for that turnover, that change of possession. Yeah, we don't actually officially have the running clock yet. That doesn't start till the second half. Oh, okay. Trips go to the far side for the Rebels. One to the near, out of the pistol. Ty Brown takes the snap, gives it to his running back. And not much there for... Mm, Parker Duke Hart Sitzman. tried to punch that ball out. It looked like he was punching the runner. I'm sure he was trying to punch the ball out. The officials did not call anything. About five, about five Rebels went <laughs> pointed right at him, <laughs> but, but still no flag. Gain of a yard for Duke Sitzman, second down and nine. Now I'm thinking if we see another ball hit the turf, you're going to have to have a snapping turtle-esque reference for it, right? <laughs> I almost went with a Rocky reference. It looked like Rocky was hitting Apollo Creed as <laughs> Apollo Creed was down. Four wide, two to each side on second down, nine. Brown takes the snap. One more time, he'll feed his running back, and Sitzman, I believe, will pound up to the 25, maybe the 26. Better gain that time for the Rebel offense on the ground. Third down and four coming up. Down to 20 seconds to go in the half. Rebels don't have to run another play if they don't want to. They are huddled up as if they're going to run another one, but they're not coming to the line of scrimmage with under 10 seconds to go. So that will be the final play of this first half from the jungle in Lincoln City. 54th annual Spencer County War, and it's been all Heritage Hills as it has been in recent years. Patriots 42, Rebels now. Think about the journey, not about how you're getting there. The all-new Michelin LTX MS2, engineered for two extra years of tread life. Available at Dubois County Tire and Supply in Jasper. Jubilar Chevy in Jasper, Indiana is your headquarters for new half-ton Silverados. And we've got them in stock. Choose from LTs, RSTs, Trail Bosses, and even High Countries. All in stock now. If we don't have the truck you're looking for, we can get it for you. The Chevy Silverado has a heritage and a history like no other truck. And now is a great time to buy one. Find your Silverado at Jubilar Chevy in Jasper. Online at jubilargm.com. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. As we get set for the start of the second half, reminder this game also will be replayed on our sister television station, WJTS 18 Sports in Jasper. And uh, you can catch the replay twice over the weekend, Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock Central and Sunday at 8 o'clock Sunday evening Central time for this rivalry game on our sister station, WJTS 18 Sports. Bill Potter on camera up top tonight, along with Michael Cruz and Caleb Nepp. I'm Steve Kolb as we get set to start half number two. Patriots have the football to start the second half. They don't have anybody deeper than the 20-yard line. They don't expect 
the Rebels to kick it deep. That looked like Ethan Fuquay having it teed up. I think as he is the kicker, I'm not sure. Well, Traven Mongold is 30. Maybe that's Traven. Not 20. Fuquay. But Ball teed up at the 40-yard line. Maybe that is Mongold. I think it's Fuquay. Okay. He will approach, and he will drive one to the 18-yard line, taken there by uh, Carson Pund, I believe, and he gets hammered as he crosses the 30 to the 31-yard line. Riley Roth came down and put a big stick on him. It's 28 who kicked that Oh, ball. okay. <laughs> And I don't have a 28 on my roster, do you? Nope. I do not as well. So we don't know who that young man is. But Heritage Hill starts the second half, first and 10. From their own 31, 1141 on the clock. And it is Aiden Fisher at quarterback. Okay. Patriots will go to a second unit here in this second half. Aiden Fisher... 5'9", sophomore, will hand off, and a big scrum right at the line of scrimmage. Luke Hartwig. Luke Hartwig will get the call, 5'10", junior. You know, as well as uh, Goldsberry was playing in the first half, if I were him, I think the, co the uh, coaching staff would have to drag me off the field. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I think he had a snowball's chance of getting back in the second <laughs> half. No gain on first down. Second down for the Patriots against the first team Rebel defense, or much of that first team. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Two wide to the near side, one to the far. And Fisher out of the pistol will take the snap and give it to his running back coming near side. And one more time, that is Hartwig. He'll get out to the 34, pick up three. It's third down at seven. First of all, you heard Coach Jeff Daming talk about in the pregame report. They're, you know, they're a... 1A football team, so their backups are JV guys, but their backups don't really have backups, and some of their backups were injured, so they don't have a lot of guys to put in, plus their starters and the guys playing tonight need the work against a good opponent, so they'll play quite a bit of this second half just to keep trying to get better. Third down and seven for the Patriots. Fisher out of the pistol again will take the snap. Rolls to the far side. He's going to take off and run. He's got some running room, 40, and he'll have the first down out to the 44-yard line. Needed seven, and he got about 10 on the play. He was a really good athlete in himself. He's, got, he's just a, junior, a sophomore, but uh, deathly afraid of snakes. So if you want to <laughs> scare the kid, all you got to do is just pull out a snake, and, I mean, he just – <laughs> loses it right there. I've had him jumping over chairs getting away from me. It's kind of sad that he's a snake weenie like that. It's kind of embarrassing. And that's yeah, the insight you're not going to get from any other radio station, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no, no, probably not. But I, but I can find a whole bunch of sophomores out there that will agree with me. <laughs> well, uh, by the way, that run will not count for Aiden Fisher as there was a flag over on that far sideline. And a holding violation against the Patriots will wipe out the first down run. Put the ball back to the 31. The, the hold was 10 yards upfield, so it ends up being no gain on the play. Third down and 10. And actually, a loss of three yards on the play. Third down and 10. Fisher takes the snap, rolls to this near side. He's going to take off and run again, and will get hit, spun around at the 37, and go down at the 38-yard line. Ty Brown was the man to get him down. It'll be fourth down and three for the Patriots. With 8.44 to go in this third quarter, we're with a running clock in this second half by rule as the Patriots lead at 42-0. Shy of the midfield stripe, will the Patriots go ahead and punt this away? It appears they will. Who's back to punt there? Is that Frakes? Is that number seven? Might be Caden Frakes, 5'10", senior. Back at his own 26, Rebels with one returner. Back at his own 30. Snap is good, and he'll ride one out of there. Woo! Big, booming punt. Backs 
Epperson up and turns him around and then takes a huge Patriot roll inside the 10-yard line and touch there at the 9. Wow, Caden Frakes with a big-time punt. That's one, of the, that's one for legends there. That <laughs> ball hit perfectly and just kept rolling. The 60-plus-yard punt there. I thought it had a chance to drop inside the 5, but... Yeah, Go ahead, sorry. No, you're right. Yeah, the gunning, the gunners kind of were a little <laughs> overzealous. <laughs> overzealous getting to that. You're right. So Rebels first and ten from their own nine. And Ty Brown still the quarterback in the pistol. The running back behind him trips to the far side, one to the near. They'll send a man in motion to the near side, fake it to him, give it to his running back. Nope, fakes it. Takes out off far side, spins out of a tackle, but cannot get any further upfield. It'll be just a three-yard gain for Ty Brown. Second down and seven coming up. That's pretty good. That's pretty good by the defense there to hold him to three yards. But, man, they were swarming. The Patriot second unit there was flying to the ball. So, second down and actually call it six, it appears. Two wide to each side. Tied into this near side this time. Brown in the pistol one more time. Ty takes the snap, gives it to his running back off the right side, pounds his way up and is near the first down marker up at the 19-yard line. They will stop play here. Uh, they say they do, but the clock continues to run. Is that Sitzman on that one? Might have been, and I they do signal a first down. I believe we've got a 15 Ashton Rhodes in a quarterback. Okay, now. Rhodes is a quarterback I now. think Brown started that drive because he definitely yeah. was the one that scrambled on that okay. first down play or second down play. Yeah, um, he did. Trips to the far side again, one to the near, and, yeah, that does look like Ashton Rhodes at quarterback. It definitely is. And the running back gets the call, tried to break out to this left side, but he was hemmed in right away and dropped. Aiden Fisher made the play, made the tackle for loss. Loss of three for the Rebel running back, second down and 13 as we move under five and a half to go and what will be a very quick third and fourth quarter. It's always... It's always impressive just to see how quick these uh, running clock games go in the second half. It seems like you look up and you're in the fourth quarter. Four wide again. And that well, may be Rhodes still in there at quarterback. Ashton takes the snap, rolls to the far side, looks to throw, fires on the run. That ball is caught. Shy of the first down, towing the sideline over there was the receiver. Not sure who it was, trying to find him running back on the field here. Like Denver Epperson, maybe. Epperson, number two. Got uh, maybe eight on that one? Yeah, because it's third down and about five. Really a nice throw by Rhodes rolling right. Ashton, a guy that I'm not sure whether he played football a year ago. He might have after sitting or he sat out a year. I'm not really sure which. But a very good athlete. Four wide again, two to each side. Rhodes takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself rolling near side. Has the first down, steps through a couple of tackles out across the 35 and to the 37, maybe 38-yard line before he is dropped. It took him a second to get that ball secured, <laughs> but he did have very nice footwork on that run. He just didn't make me nervous because he was kind of – had the ball juggling and out in front of him and everywhere else, but it was good for a first down. Managed to pick up 12 on a really nice job by by Rhodes to come in here, and he's looked poised so far. Good job by the offensive line for the Rebels on that play. First and 10 from their own 37, same formation. Rhodes takes the snap, gives it to his running back, Kind of looking more like a read option on a couple of those uh, gives, but uh, Duke Sitzman had nowhere to go after ending up with the football. No gain, second down and 10. Down 
Down to three minutes to go in this fast-moving third quarter. 42-0 Patriots. That's where we were at halftime. Out of the pistol on second and ten. Rhodes takes the snap, rolls far side, looks to throw, fires on the run. Had a man open past the first down marker at midfield, but overthrew him wide and high out of bounds. And it's third down and ten. A little bit too much on that one. and Led the receiver also a little over his head, but Rhodes has a nice arm, especially uh, coming off the bench. Sometimes it's hard to find your rhythm. Yeah, I'd agree. That was a, a pretty throw. I mean, it wasn't where it was. It wasn't accurate, but it was pretty. <laughs> it, it got there fast, and it was on a spiral, and it was a, you know, a tough angle for him to throw to the outside. So third down and ten for the Rebels from their own 37. Have to hurry to beat the play clock, and they do. Fake the handoff, and Rhodes keeps it himself. Gets outside far side, breaks a tackle, and forced out of bounds around the 45. Another good run for the junior quarterback. They'll say he actually stepped out of bounds back at the 43. Fourth down and about four coming up for the Rebels. You know, he, if I wouldn't know, if I didn't know any better, I would think that was Ty Brown still in there at quarterback with just how athletic he is. And Seen that on the basketball Ty floor. Ty Brown is back out, so I guess he's going to punt. I guess they will at least line him up in punt formation here on fourth and four from just shy of midfield. Brown with about an eight-foot drop, takes the high snap, and will ride one out of there very high and very short. Lands at the Patriot 41 and goes immediately out of bounds at the 42. So a short punt. We used to call that, or I've always called that the Jade Winchell effect. Jade Winchell on the 20, uh, the 35-yard line down there, and now a coach. But you didn't want to, teams did not want to punt to him, and they would punt it out of bounds. But since then, there have been about, about <laughs> 10 other Patriots that have induced the Jade Winchell effect <laughs> over the years, including Jay Cutler uh -huh. uh, and, and players that just, you know, teams just don't want to deal with that punt return with the Patriots. Second unit offense for Heritage Hills. Final 30 seconds of this third quarter. Aiden Fisher in the pistol. High snap. Pulls it down. Gives it to his running back. Spinning out oh. of a tackle is Carson Pond and Thumbnail. lost the football. I think Fisher was the one that fell on it. The quarterback behind the play saw the ball and fell on it back at the 39-yard line. It will end up being a loss of three or four yards for Heritage Hills. Carson Pun spun around and spun out of the football. Final play of the third quarter in Lincoln City. It is Heritage Hills 42, South Spencer nothing on the RG Mechanical scoreboard. We're back for the fourth after this on 1033 The Fix Sports. After a long day of digging holes and keeping cats out of my yard, I'll wind down on a nice, comfy, soft cloud. My human buys the best fluffy stuff from Carpet Warehouse. At Carpet Warehouse, you'll find a floor that will please the whole family, even the ones with four legs. Rory loves to cool off by laying on laminates, tile, vinyl, or wood. You'll love them for their style and many selections. Carpet Warehouse, quality I can lay on, quality you can stand on. One party rule in Indiana has shifted the tax burden towards the middle class by increases in sales taxes and increased fees. It is time for the middle class to get a tax cut by cutting the sales tax and create progressive tax brackets in the income tax so the wealthy start paying their fair share. Vote Bob Compton, state representative in District 74, for a fair tax. Paid for by the Spencer County Democratic Central Committee. Karen Wanninger, treasurer. Then all Heritage Hills, 42-0. Head to the fourth quarter in this one. And that was a fast third quarter. No question about that. Just a couple possessions. The Patriots will have the ball back. You got that right. I'll get you a couple other scores here while we wait. Both both the big SIAC games that I referenced earlier, both 28-6. to six. They were both 21-6 to six last time I checked. Still Wrights leading north and Memorial leading modern day. 
Also, Boonville and North Knox has gone final. That one, 35 to six. Forest Park finishes off to come see 44 nothing. I can't wait to see. I uh, can't wait to see that uh, Forest Park South Spencer game coming up here in a couple weeks. That should be a really good ball game. South Spencer uh, should say Heritage Hills on offense, second down, 13 from their own 39. Trips to the far side in a bunch, one to the near and. Whistles will blow this dead. Rebels were not set up on defense, so they use a timeout before we get the fourth quarter underway. We'll take a break and come back after this on 1033 The Fix Sports. McDonald's is committed to being the best first job in America with flexible schedules, professional training, customer service, and leadership opportunities, along with competitive wages and paid vacations. You could earn up to $3,000 in educational benefits while learning work skills that will help you in any career field. Further your education with Indiana Tech by getting 20% off their tuition rate. Team members receive free meals on the clock and a 30% discount while off duty. McDonald's is committed to helping you succeed. Explore McDonald's job opportunities at manmcdonalds.com. Back to play, and we missed a play here in the fourth quarter. Carson Punn got the carry. He ended up with uh, about a six- or seven-yard gain. Steamrolled one of his linemen <laughs> downfield and ended up going down after that right at the 50-yard line. But a flag flew at the end of that play, and the way the Patriot offense is backing up, it's on here to chills. But the men in stripes are having a long discussion about it. And it is an illegal block in the back against Heritage Hills or an illegal use of the hands, one variety of the other or the other. Puts the football back to the 39. I guess making sure the Rebels didn't want to settle for third and two, which I don't know why they would in that situation. So now it's second down and 13 again back at the 39. Just underway in this fourth quarter. Three wide receivers in a bunch to the far side. One man to the near. Fisher takes the handoff, gives it to Pun. Giving up a little ground to get outside far side. He does beat that defensive lineman and turns up the field and gets about uh, four or five yards on the play up to the 44. Third down and about eight coming up for the Patriots. One of the better four or five yard gains you'll see it looked like that was going to be a loss of two yeah it's a good footwork you know a lot of times you see a guy plant and drive well he did the choppy thing <laughs> there you know you see a lot of pros do that you don't see very many high school kids do that they'll plant and make that move but that was more of a gathering your feet not stopping those feet and then he made a nice little cut back there that's a pretty impressive footwork move Balanced formation with four wide out of the pistol. Aiden Fisher takes the snap, drops back to pass. Sets up and fires low, far side diving attempt over there. Maybe Tice Winchell. No, oh. Tice isn't dressed out, okay. I think. I thought I saw 17. That was clearly not the right number. Who was that over there? There's 17 right there. He was spinning the football on his finger before the game. That's an impressive move, Six, too. 16. Uh, that was Andrew James. Could not come up with it. Fourth down, just shy of midfield, and Patriots will punt. Caden Frakes absolutely bombed one the last time he came in to punt. Rebels will send Denver Epperson back deep to his own 20. Snap is good, and Frakes gets off one not quite as big a boomer this time. Will land just inside the 30 and take a <laughs> Patriot roll quickly out of bounds around the 20. Nobody had any clue where that ball was. <laughs> none of the receivers, the defenders, none of them. They were all looked like they were running to the middle of the field and it hit all the way on the far sideline. It was a Rebel blocker that was a little too close for comfort if you're a Rebel fan, but it didn't bounce toward him when it hit behind him and chased the sideline. The Rebels first and 10 from their own 23. Looks like we're still going to have 
Well, that might be. I think it's Rhodes in at quarterback, but I might be mistaken. We shall see. Pistol formation. Trips to the near side. One to the far. Man in motion into the backfield. High snap and the give to the running back. Trying to get outside near side. He gets grabbed around to the back of the jersey and spun down by Lane Fish. <coughs> excuse me, Lane Fisher, 6'2", sophomore. Number nine at quarterback. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a nine on my roster. I don't either. So Rebels getting deep into their rotation of guys here and guys we don't have on our varsity roster now that was 23 zach downs on the carry on that one okay five five eight freshman is zach downs and the quarterback will turn and give it to downs trying to get outside far side and he gets him in and drop back at the 20 he'll lose a couple of yards here make it third down and long Yeah, we're at the point where this has basically become a midweek JV game. Might have been Caden Helmling on the stop there from his linebacker spot. Good open field tackle for whomever it was. Third down and 12. Angus Coley out there. Seth Raven for the Patriots. Of course, Aiden Fisher. Carter Cress. They'll fake the handoff. Quarterback will roll on the near side. Fires on the run, and oh. it is intercepted by Helmling, I believe, and he will take it to the house from about the 16-yard line. Caden Helmling on the pick six for the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, that was a great job by him to cut that throw off. He was behind the defender. Made a great read, probably watching the quarterback's eyes on that one, and took it back to the house. Do have a different kicker, it looks like, out there. 88. Julian Bame, 5'8", junior. Carter Crest comes off. Carter, the son of Adam Crest, the teammate of Jay Cutler. And okay. And whatever, the Mental Attitude Award winner, first ever at Herdy Chills. Officials stop play here before this extra point. Patriots bringing some subs on and off. Still had plenty of time on the play clock, but the officials stopped it for some reason as they talk things over. And they wave off a potential flag. I think one of the officials was worried about an illegal substitution, but they will not... Throw the flag and Bame on for, to attempt the extra point. Snap is good. The youngster's <laughs> kick is up, and it just doesn't oh. quite get there. It might Rebels. have been slightly blocked, do That's you think? Yeah, it, it was close blocked. to being blocked. The whoosh of, if he missed it, the whoosh of the miss might have been enough to push it to the right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just right at the crossbar as to having enough distance. But I think you're right. I think it did fade to the right just a little bit. So Bame makes, misses the extra point. And there was been some good football players at Heritage Hills with the na last name of Bame, too, Michael. Yeah, is that Bame? It's B-O-H-M on the... Uh, oh, I had B-O-E-H-M. -E okay, on the main on the main roster, it says B-O-H-M. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jared Bame's a beast. That, that, that's a... Nice Herdy Chills name there. I could have misspelled it on my roster. I, I retype my own in big numbers and letters so I can read it better. But uh, not a, clearly, at this point, I'm not above mistakes. So it looks like Houston Litton will kick it away again. Gibson Southern only leads South Warren by three now. That's an interesting game. South Warren has been a, what, 4A power in the state of Kentucky, won a couple of state championships. They're out of the metro uh, Bowling Green area. High and deep kick for Litton, taken at the one-yard line by maybe Epperson, cutting to the near side. It is Denver trying to get to the outside, I believe, to the 20, 25, and 
knocked down hard there. Maybe it was Nice, but I it thought was, it was it was Nice. It was yeah, Nice, number nice. three, and not number two. And he was tackled hard, and he is still on the ground. That's how my son dislocated his shoulder. Like he drug it across, got a guy fall on top of him and drug it across. I hope it's not that. And the clock does stop with the injury. One of the few times the clock does stop with a running clock in football as Bladen Nice taken down hard at his own 27-yard line. Clean tackle, but very hard as he had two guys hit him and kind of land on top of him as they forced him to the ground. 48 nothing. Heritage Hills on top with 6.13 to go. The last one, a defensive score. It's Caden Helmling picks one off and takes it to the house. I had it at about 16 yards. Nice is up, walking under his own power. Helmet is off. So Spencer trainer. And, uh, I've just blanked on her name. Came across to check on him, and they'll walk him across the field. Sherry Oots, I believe is her name. I don't think it's listed here. So, Rebel second team offense back to work with 6.13 to go in this fourth quarter. Rebels will send one man wide to the near side. Cash McCarry or McCaffrey, I'm not sure which, 5'10 freshman. Two wide receivers to the far side. And comes in motion to the near side, and the give is to the running back. Trying to get outside was Zach Downs, but the Patriot defense was all over him and flag. dropped him back at the 23 and a flag on the play. Might have been a face mask. Yeah, believe either a horse collar or face mask hard to tell from here but it's going to be one or the other yeah officials trying to get this game over as quickly as possible they are not in any hurry with a running clock to get this uh, penalty marked off it was a personal foul against heritage hills so that may have been the horse collar. I think it was the horse collar. It looked like the official was grabbing his shirt instead of grabbing his face mask. So they will mark the penalty off. It's a 15-yarder on a personal foul. So all the way up to the Rebel, I'm sorry, to the, uh, the Patriot 38-yard line where it's a first down by penalty. Trips to the near side for the Rebels. One man to the far. Pistol backfield with our as of yet unnamed quarterback. And now we'll stop play. The side judge on the near side will come in to talk things over with the lead official. And the clock just continues. Now it does actually stop because of this situation with the three officials talking again. Three of the five. North Posey leads Tell City 20-7 to in the fourth. Could be two of the top three teams in the pack small school conference. Yeah, that's that's a bit a big a bit of a flex tonight for North Posey. It's a good Tell City team that probably the only thing the marksmen truly miss is a passing game. And evidently they didn't mark off the full fifteen. So they moved the football up to the 40, 48 yard line and it'll be first and ten from there. For the Rebel offense. And the give will be right up the middle to the running back. And he finds good room out across midfield. And spun down near the first down marker at the Patriot 48. Was that Downs again? Yeah, 23. Zach Downs picks up a 10-yard carry and a first down. Nope. They'll say just nine. Shop, stop short at the 48. Second down and a yard. So we're down to 4-10 to go in this one. Trips to the near side and one man to the far. Downs in the pistol behind his quarterback. He takes the snap, runs an option pitch, and Downs gets cut down on a great open field tackle from a Patriot over there. Aiden Fisher 
Fisher came flying up the field and closed very fast. And, you know, we may call that the Jet Goldsberry effect, Michael, because guys see how quickly Jet closes ground on guys, and there's an, there's an instinct to want to try to do that as fast as he does. I'm not saying Aiden was that fast, but he did close very quickly, which is, you know, maybe an effect of watching Jet in practice a lot. Yeah, could be. Because Jet's about as good as I've ever seen. Give up the middle again to Downs. And lost about six yards on that last, seven yards on that last play. He'll get some of it back up to about the 50. And it's going to be fourth down and three for the Rebels. Down to three minutes to go in this one. I've, I've really always thought there was that effect in sports. When you see one guy do something well, you want to try to work on that skill yourself. You want to try to you, – maybe you don't do it as well as he do, did, but you suddenly are trying to do that to the best of your ability because of what you see another man do. Trips to the near side, one to the far, and it's a quarterback keeper. Pitch out here on the option pitch to Downs, and he'll get to the edge, have the first down, and forced out of bounds. And Another big hit there. Yeah. Could have – it was almost a late hit. On Andrew James, but no flag flew. Seth Raymond came in late, too, and I, he might have been the one that made the hit. James was pushing him out of bounds. But somebody hit him hard. It might have been James. but <laughs> you know, I think James was on him several yards out of bounds as they went down. It might have been Raven that had the bigger force on that play. That was really about as well as you can run an option play like that. The yeah. Man. Well done by yeah. the, the unnamed quarterback and Zach <laughs> Downs. So we have a quarterback that we don't have on our roster, so we're not sure. And the give again is Downs up the middle, and he gets snowed under. I don't know if the ball came out. It does not appear so. But no gain on that play. It's second down and 10, and we're down to a minute 35 to go in this one. It might be Matthew Stafford. I think he's number nine, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, only man. number nine I know. That. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Feller used to be number nine for the Patriots long ago. I don't okay. know any Rebel number nines. Trips to the far side, one to the near. Pistol backfield on second and ten. With a minute five to go. They'll run the option far side. The quarterback will keep it. Nobody came to shut him down, so he turns it up the field inside the 40 and Spun down at the 36-yard line. A little triple option. Well, maybe not a triple option, but <clears throat> well, quarterback could run, pitch, or pass. They didn't do the dive or the belly there. But that looks like an interesting. Yeah. Yeah, out of the pistol, the belly would be a little difficult to pull off. I'm not sure how you'd do that, but without that extra blocker in there, but. Picked up seven, second down three. Rebels go quickly as we're under a minute. Oh. And, oh, that ball hit the ground. The quarterback didn't see his, his running back had fumbled, and then it bounced right back to him. And at the last second, the quarterback got down on it back at the 40. 15 seconds to go. We'll see if the Rebels even attempt to run one more play here. High risk, high reward on that pitch. Patriots don't think they'll get a playoff, and they won't. They start to head out to shake hands, and that'll do it. 42 nothing. Your final in this one. Patriots got or 48 nothing. I beg your pardon. As the Patriots had 42 in the first half and the second unit with a pick six in the third quarter and they, the Patriots went at 48 nothing to improve to 3 and 1. Rebels fall to 1 and 3. 48 nothing your final. The post game report is next on 1033 the Fix Sports. The preceding was a special presentation of 18 WJTS TV. High School Football on WJTS is proudly brought to you by Ubalor Chevy and Ubalor Toyota, Lyuna of the Indiana Laborers District Council, Just Whimsy, Meyer Truck Equipment, Dubois County Tire, Man Enterprises, Carpet Warehouse, and Maringer's Plumbing, Heating, and Air, and 18 WJTS a DC Broadcasting Company.